in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merit and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Scripture makes no exceptions when it says that sin is master everywhere. In this way, the promise can only be given through faith in Jesus Christ and can only be given to those who have this faith. Before faith came, we were allowed no freedom by the law. We were being looked after till faith was revealed. The law was to be our guardian until the Christ came and we could be justified by faith. Now that that time has come, we are no longer under that guardian, and you are, all of you, sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. All baptized in Christ, you have all clothed yourselves in Christ, and there are no more distinctions between Jew and Greek, slave and free, male and female. But all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Merely by belonging to Christ, you are the posterity of Abraham, the heirs he was promised. The Word of the Lord The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O oh, sing to the Lord, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. Be proud of his holy name, let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Consider the Lord and his strength, constantly seek his face. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham his servant, O sons of the Jacob he chose, he the Lord is our God, his judgments prevail in all the earth. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we shall come to him. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was speaking, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said, Happy the womb that bore you and the breast you sucked. But he replied, Still happier those who hear the word of God and keep it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters and brothers, as I reflect on the readings today, I realize that we are people who are formed by rules and laws. Laws have a place, particularly in helping us form proper relation with others. Laws set limits on people who cannot control themselves. And Paul remarks that the law had its place in helping people know how to act when they were not gifted by being aware of God's presence. I am reminded of a Malay proverb that says, 
biar mati anak, jangan mati adat. Which means, better your children die than your traditions. In that mindset, laws are what are to be obeyed for the benefit of the whole. Laws are to be followed to the exact letter. Laws are the basis for life. The law should never be questioned or changed or disobeyed. In this worldview, laws are suggestions for living life the best way. They are not norms but ideals. This is the way one should act if everything was perfect. But so the thinking goes, since no one is perfect, don't worry if the law does not fit our lifestyle. On the other hand, of looking at what should shape our way of acting is that which we hear in the readings today. Laws are guidelines for those who are not in a faith relationship with God. Once we are in a strong faith relationship with God, our life is ruled by love. Love is thus the fulfillment of the law. If we are touched by the love of God, then we will move far beyond what is required by the law. Our loving faith relationship with God, therefore, should drive our actions. We will not think of being limited by rules, but we will want to do the most we can for others. Yet, we cannot easily get to that point unless we are willing to be attentive to the Lord Jesus and the relationship we have with Him and His Father and the Holy Spirit. We need to listen to God speaking to us and then put that into action. If we can do that, then we are truly in a relationship with God. Listening to God's word and putting it into action is what allowed Mary to give life to the word made flesh. She is blessed because she was offered the word and said yes in the greatest way possible. What is exciting to me is that when we truly listen to the word of God and make it active in our lives, then we will move far beyond the limitation and restrictions of the law. We will act with the love which we have received from God. We will treat others as our equals. Even more than that, we will treat them as our brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus. We will see beyond apparent differences to the reality that we are children of the same God. We will want to do what is best for our siblings, even risking our lives, because we will be motivated by the word we have received, by the love which has touched our lives, by the faith relationship we have with our Father through Jesus, our brother, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.